This video will introduce you to referencing with the Oxford University Standard for Citation of Legal Authorities, or OSCOLA for short. The Oxford University Standard for Citation of Legal Authorities is designed to facilitate the accurate citation of authorities, legislation and other legal materials. It is widely used in law schools and by journal and book publishers in the UK and beyond. It's also the preferred referencing format for the University of Hull Law School. In academic writing, you must use references in your work to acknowledge your sources. Here we have some academic writing with no evidence. If we add in some evidence using Oscola, you can see it uses a footnote based system to add this evidence in. Wherever some evidence is used in text, a superscript number is used to flag where that evidence links to. Then at the bottom in the footnote area, full details are provided for that source, enough for a reader to be able to find it themselves. The numbers in the text link to the numbers at the bottom of the page, and Microsoft Word's insert footnote tool can help you automate this. So why do we reference? Using references makes your argument stronger. It provides evidence for all of the assertions you're making. If we take a point, like this, due to global warming, the average temperature of the Earth is increasing every year, an academic reader would ask, where's the evidence? Where's the research? How do you prove this? Adding in that Oscola format citation provides evidence for this. It shows that this isn't just something a student's made up. They've got this from a good quality source. And if I want to as the reader, I can go and read this myself using the information provided at the bottom. Using references also engages you with the academic and legal community. It helps you show that you're using the same sources as other people and appropriate forms of precedence. Another essential aspect of referencing is that it stops you from plagiarising. Plagiarism is where you inadvertently or purposefully present somebody else's work as your own. This should not be taken as the university discouraging you from using other ideas. Far from it. Good academic work is based on sound evidence from other sources, but you must acknowledge where they came from. This not only adds strength to your work, but avoids plagiarism by acknowledging where those ideas came from. If you do present somebody else's work as your own, this is plagiarism, a serious academic offence, so referencing can help you avoid this. Let's look at an example of plagiarism so you can understand this further. On the left there's some original text, and I'll let you read this now. And now on the right, we have the same text that's practically been lifted directly from the original with a couple of tweaks. You can see here the students changed a couple of words and moved the order of some of the phrasing. This does not demonstrate their understanding and is practically a direct copy of the original text. This is blatant plagiarism and must be avoided at all costs. So how do we avoid this? Well, the first way to prevent plagiarism is through a quotation. You can see on the example on the right, the directly lifted text has been quoted using double quotation marks. There's then a superscript number at the end, which will link to the full citation information in the footnote, demonstrating where this idea came from and the page, if the source has one. Quite often, a better way to prevent plagiarism, however, is through paraphrasing. This is where you read an original text, really understand it, and then write about it in your own words, but still include that citation to link back to where you got the idea from. Again, that superscript number is used to link to the full footnote information at the bottom of the document page. So let's look at paraphrasing in a bit more detail, what it is and why we do it. Paraphrasing is about taking some original text and putting it into your own words but this needs to go far beyond this example here, which is badly paraphrased. Here we can see the student has copied and pasted the original text and changed a few words round. 
such as swapping curricula for syllabus, or the phrase to become more focused to to focus. This does not demonstrate good understanding of the source, and is substantially the same as the original. This is bad paraphrasing, and potential plagiarism. To be really effective at paraphrasing, you need to step away from just looking at a single sentence or paragraph. Moreover, good paraphrasing is about mining for ideas. So you will read a text, whether it's a journal article, a case, or a publication from a legal authority. You get to grips with it, you understand it, and then start to write about it in your own words. There may be some specific phrasing you need to quote, but to substantially demonstrate your understanding, you discuss it in your own words, not looking at rewriting a single sentence or paragraph, but looking across whole aspects of the text to think about where it really links in with your current assignment. Now, paraphrasing is usually better than quotes for a few reasons. It shows you've understood the point being made by the author. It makes reading your text easier, giving it more flow. It allows your own voice to be heard in how you're talking and presenting that information. However, there are times when direct quotes may work, such as when an author expresses themselves in an unusual or notable way, when the words themselves have historical or other significance. There may be no other way of saying it, or it's a very specific legal phrasing or precedence that you need to cite directly. Hopefully this video has helped you get to grips with the purpose of referencing. The next video in this series will go into the detail of when you will reference in your work.